Welcome to my YouTube channel. My guest on Facing the Canon is Mark Birch Machin, Professor of Dermatology. Welcome, Professor Mark Birch Machin. Lovely to have you on Facing the Canon. Very excited to be here. Now, you are Professor of Dermatology. What does that post, position, what is it? Okay, so, so actually my official title is, is very long, but most of the people in the cosmetic industry call me Professor of Beauty. Which I, oh, quite, which I quite like. I like that too. I like that too. It's better than molecular dermatology, isn't it, really? Because yeah, oh, I, I, don't understand, I, I don't understand what that is. But Professor of Beauty is, is, is good. So really, I look into um, skin aging, a little bit of skin cancer, but mainly the process is to do with how our skin ages and how to prevent that, really, how to look young, you Okay, know, tell us... Mark, some facts about the skin. Oh my goodness. Go well, on. all right, and let, all right. The skin is the largest organ in the body. All right, so if you stretched it out, it would cover a cricket pitch. A cricket pitch? Yeah, there you go. Now, I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, I knew it was the largest <laughs> organ in the body. Okay, go on, tell us some other interesting facts. Oh my goodness. Um, so, um, so its ability to heal is, is amazing, as we know, if we, if we cut ourselves, you know, the fact that the, the skin swells will, will migrate, they will travel and be attracted to each other and actually form the, the wound and the wound heal. So I think, to be honest, it's almost, it's, you can learn a lot from skin in the sense that actually there's so much in the world where things drive us apart, but skin cells always want to be attracted to each other. So I think there's a big lesson there. Amazing. Now in your research, which you've been doing for many, many years. Yeah, 150 years, I think, yeah. Because obviously the skin <laughs> aging thing works, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what 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 have you discovered about the skin and about the sun? Yeah, so um, so what I'm known for um, internationally is um, we've actually um, found a kind of a marker, uh, what we call a biomarker. What I like to call is a diary, kind of a diary of uh, the damage that our skin has received at its DNA level. So it's like a DNA diary of damage. So what we're able to do is th that DNA is housed in the batteries of our cell. So as we get older, you know, a couple of things happen with our skin and actually all the other tissues in our body. Um, we actually run out of, you know, our, our energy declines, you know, and so uh, the batteries of our cells, um, we want to pet them up. We want to kind of like give them a boost. And, and actually what happens is what we found is that the DNA in those batteries will actually record how much damage your skin has had. And we can read that diary and tell you what you did to your skin last summer and also the previous summers. And then that enables us to measure interventions and how good they are, like a track and trace. So how do we look after our skin? What advice would you give to us? Right, well, um, clearly your heart is maybe sinking now if you listen to this thing, he's gonna tell me to live in a cupboard for the rest of my life, you know, keep out the sun and all that kind of stuff. But part of it is, is, is working with your lifestyle. It's no good for me to say to you, um, keep out the sun if you're um, working outdoors all the time or you have lots of spare time and you're a sailor or you play lots of tennis and all this kind of stuff. So you have to work with your lifestyle so, so, so advice is, um, is to um, decrease the stress from the outside, which is pollution and sun. So, you know, like have lunch in the shade. You don't have to have lunch outside and get burnt. You know, just, just be under the shade of a tree because you can put sunscreen on, but actually the shade of a tree is very good. So, so use common sense. So use common sense, you know, and, and actually from the inside out as well, beauty from within, we call it, all right? So, so in terms of diet, lifestyle, things like that, actually what you eat and sleep, the pattern of your sleep and things like that is really important. Um, we're doing hopefully some work in the future on circadian rhythm because actually um, your skin has different phases where actually it repairs better at some times than others and so again that's something to, to investigate as well because so, so. the body repairs during the time that we sleep yeah but, yeah but what about people who struggle to sleep 
Okay, um, so um, the, the, there's still the, the natural rhythm of the skin, so there is repair going on, but it's not as profound. And so that's why um, we, we know if we've been burning the candle at both ends, you've been working on deadlines, things like that. You look in the mirror in the morning, and you think, oh my goodness. Yes, I don't look good. I, I don't look the way that I wanted to this morning. And there's very little you can do about it, really. I mean, you can spend two hours working on it. But at the same time, um, the, 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 the bags and the wrinkles do show. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, so lifestyle, and, and it's this whole thing about lifestyle with everything, with, with, uh, with spiritual life, with, with every other aspect of life, isn't it? Is the fact that actually the small decisions we make actually reveal eventually those big things. So in, in other words, if we're looking after our skin, if we're making the wrong decisions, then actually, you know, it doesn't matter so much every day. But after about a year, two years, three years, fine lines, wrinkles and all that kind of stuff. And it is with the spiritual life, isn't it? The fact that actually it's those little decisions every day that don't despise the day of small beginnings thing that actually over six months, 12 months, you know, two, three years, people look at your life and think, you know, they hopefully they will think, wow, that's great. Bless life, everything else. But actually it starts with those unknown, unseen, small decisions that you do with God that actually result in in the the exterior which people can 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 kind of say well that's that's great and and there's an overflow from that that you want to bless others yeah. so yeah. when you look at my skin what do you think <laughs> well, am i looking got, good from well my you age? are because you told you told me your age and and actually you're looking you're looking very good and actually if you when you come up to newcastle uh, 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 i have an office in a big national center where we have a facial imaging machine. So actually it maps uh, everything and it does a 3D thing and you'll come out really well. So, and it tells you your actual um, skin age versus your chronologic age. That's amazing. So you'll be, you'll, you'll be very pleased. So, so were you surprised that I, that by my age and my skin? Yeah, yeah. So you've, you've looked after your skin. Yeah. Well, I, I've tried to, but I'm Greek Cypriot. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, and spent many, many summers out in the sun. Yes, but it, but it, but it also uh, is linked to diet as well. So you'll have had actually probably a Mediterranean diet. Yes. yes. Well, there you go. So, you know, it's the kind of balancing up the antioxidants and everything else, which is the beauty from within. Yeah. Well, yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. And, and I do use a particular moisturizer. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Yeah. 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 No, for it's it, important in the winter um, uh, to moisturize every day. Uh, if uh, is a little tip here um, yeah. is the fact that um, when you see. So I used to work on TV claims for the ASA and, and, and stuff that and looking at uh, companies wanting to make claims and most companies, I don't think they tend to do it now, but say, let's say 15 years ago, you know, when it was um, that we tried 10 people and it works. Yes. Um, those 10 people would have probably been at high altitude in the winter. In other words, um, a tub of lard would have worked because obviously if you're at high altitude in the winter, your skin is dry. Yes. So anything you put on will help your skin. Yes. The test is, is, is it good in a high humid environment where it's warm, such, I don't know, like the Amazons, things yes. like that. So, so in those days when it was claims, there was, I'm not saying that everybody did that, but, you know, of course it's going to work. And, and actually some of those products are really good. But yeah, yeah. Now, you're a scientist, but you're also a man of faith. Yes. So not only have you researched the sun, S-U-N, you love the sun, S-O-N. I do. S -O -N. I do very much. Now, when did you first encounter Jesus? Well, we were talking earlier about uh, when I went to university, I found two J's uh, and the first J was my wife, Juliet, and the second J was Jesus. Uh, and so I had no Christian background whatsoever, went to university and my wife told me about Jesus. And I had this kind of conversion experience, um, uh, actually having no background at all with, with faith or anything like that. There's nobody in my family generations up that um, we can find who actually were born again. How did it change your life? So I, I came to Jesus in a, in a moment. It was a conversion moment where um, it was actually uh, a prophetic, a word of knowledge from Gerald Coates, actually. He called me out um, of, a, of a meeting. So th this is a mutual friend of ours. Yes. So what, when you say a word of knowledge, you, you mean he spoke something that revealed a truth that nobody knew. Exactly, exactly. So what I did is, is um, so um, God was speaking to me. Um, actually, I used to go to the Christian Union meeting because um, I was invited um, 
by Judette. We weren't going out at the time, but she invited me and I used to go for the talky bit, not go for the worship because I didn't want to be a hypocrite. So one time I turned up early, people were excited, um, speaking in tongues and all this kind of stuff. And you know how we're supposed to think that that's actually going to put people off? I looked at it and thought, they've got something that I want. It really kind of turned me, turned me on to kind of actually thinking, I want this. And so then there was a process where, you know, because actually it was, the, it was the love of God spoke into my heart rather than just feeding my intellect, you know. And so, so I just... So that created a lot of curiosity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was curious and it awakened something in my heart. So I made a kind of, I said to, to God, um, in a random church in Sheffield where I was doing an essay, I said, God, uh, I'll accept you, um, but I really need to know that you've accepted me. Can you tell me? I mean, it's a kind of reasonable prayer, isn't it? You know, I, w- I want to know that you've accepted me because I, I didn't. You know. Fast forward, Gerald Coates, mutual friends. There's about 600 people in the room. He calls out two people that night, both called Mark. And he comes up and says, um, uh, Mark, I've got a message for you from God. And it is, he has accepted you. It's like, wow. And have you given, you know, would you like to give your life to Jesus, be filled with the Holy Spirit? I said, yes. So, uh, and literally, I was electrocuted from heaven in a nice way, you know. <laughs> yeah, Power came through my body. Your entire being. My entire being. I was rewired everything. And so it went from living life, seeing in black and white to colour. My lifestyle changed. The way I spoke changed. Everything changed. I have never looked back. I have every day... Every day I'm more in love with Jesus than I was the previous day. And, I'm, and, and as we're sitting here now, I am so in love with Jesus. It really does. And I cry very easily. So, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, it's like the love of God. Uh, and I just, it's always, it's an upper trend. Because the more you find about the heart of Jesus, as we've been wrapped in kind of, um, you know, the comfort of heaven. And being woven into to love's fabric. That we think, oh. Entwine me even more, Jesus, into your heart. You told me a lovely story when you were in an elevator. Uh, was that at a particular conference or something? Yes. Well, that was just in in where I uh, work. Around. Well, yeah, yeah. God, yeah. what happened? Yeah. So, so I've led. Uh, I've had the privilege of leading a lot of people to Jesus. A lot of people from different aspects of life. But uh, and and people always say it must be really difficult for scientists to to give their lives to Jesus. I haven't found that. You know, I haven't found that. And um, and so, uh, you know, led people, um, uh, experts in human genetics, international experts in human genetics, dean of dental schools, etc. And the way it normally goes in, 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 a, in the elevator, so people know I, I'm a man of faith. And, and so you would get in and the conversation would be, and, and we talk about elevator pitches, don't we, in business? You know, you've got 30 seconds or 60 seconds to give a pitch of your business, right? So the conversation goes, um, usually goes down the 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 subject of evolution and creation all that kind of stuff and and, I, and i'll just you know s- stop them there because i actually want to speak to the person's heart i don't want to get into involved in intellectual debate over an event that neither of us were at yes it's that's like, it's, right it's we like discussing there. a party that neither of us were invited to you know <laughs> how'd, were... the, how'd the party go i don't know i wasn't there were you there no i wasn't there so should we discuss it for the next half an hour so when they bring up evolution you say well i wasn't there i wasn't there and you, you weren't, there. weren't there so i could say what i like and you would disagree with me because um but but i wasn't there so how and, and vice versa i said so uh we could spend the elevator ride in in actually um I could ask you how the pain is going in your right hip that you've had for five years. And then the response is, how do you know that? And I'll say, the God that you don't believe in just told me that. And it's true. So then as the doors open and you're about to leave the lift, there's a decision moment, isn't there? And the decision moment is, we've had a nice conversation and we go, or I say, actually, I could pray to the God that you don't believe in, but I believe and I have faith for you to be healed. I can pray for your hip right now for that pain to go, or we could just leave. And from their point of view is the fact that it's it's a win-win. They, they can't lose, can oh, they? Sure. So how do they react in that situation? Well, because usually there are no spectators and, and people kind of worry about how they look and all that kind of stuff. You know, like, oh, you know, I'm not, I would feel a bit embarrassed. It's usually just two people in a lift and they go, all right then, all right. 
so and and they expect you then to walk away and pray for you like somewhere like there so we'll do it now and they go okay what do i do i said nothing and you pray your best prayer and because we're in a lift and the doors you know you don't want to keep the doors open because they, they have a fit don't they those doors if you start you know it's you my best prayer is hit me well you know Jesus heal this man's hip or this lady's hip. Or yes. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, because yeah. you, you haven't got long. You can't. You don't, you, no, you, you don't need to labour the point. No, and no. Jesus knows. You can't go from sort of Shakespeare's soliloquy. No. You know, so uh, and I would say that uh, we were talking before is the fact it's close to 100 percent. I, I, it might even be 100 percent. But, you know, let's say it's close to 100 percent of the times that that person is healed instantly. And what do they say? Well, well, part of it is they're shocked, you know. So there's because two... this is the, in response to the God that they don't believe exactly. in. Exactly. What has just happened? And so usually at that moment, it can lead to someone saying, well, you know, sometimes people say, well, I want the whole lot. I want the whole enchilada. I want to know the person, Jesus, who's just healed me. And I, I don't just want God on the outside. I want him on the inside. You know, it's that kind of thing, isn't it? And But often it's a case of um, I'm slightly in shock. This is a good thing. I'm having to process it, and then I get an email saying, remember that, that time in the lift? Yeah, can we have a cup of coffee to talk about that? And then it becomes a process or a journey where we unpack that and unpack the Jesus who's just healed them. What I love about you, Mark, is that you know, you're, you're a professor who is world-renowned in dermatology, and, um, but you are a person who carries the presence of Jesus wherever you go, Thank and you. you're both a professor and you're an evangelist. Yeah. In that sense, yeah, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, the, and, and, and actually, you know, I, I walk very much in the prophetic and the apostolic. But, but you're right. I kind of, you know, and people say, well, you're a prophet, Mark, and all this kind of stuff. Well, I said, well, actually, you know, I hear God. I say, um, I call out the golden people, which actually the heart of prophecy should be. Right. It should always point to Jesus. It shouldn't point to the prophet. Yeah. And. And actually, I often see prophecy as a tool for people to come to Jesus. So I think you're right, you know, and yeah. it, isn't it? It's, it's, and it's, that, it's that heart of, of just, uh, I don't know, it's just speaking to the heart of someone and, and actually wanting for them what Jesus has done for me, but does for me every day of my life Absolutely. as I stay soft in him. And during the um, season of very extensive lockdown that we've had over these last two years, you also managed to write this book, Go Dream. Yeah. Right. Go Dream. Okay, tell us about dreams then. Okay. What, what, why, <laughs> what, why do we dream? <laughs> Well, actually, uh, dream, you know, dream, we, we, we dream, we know we dream, at, you know, at night and actually we spend, you know, sometimes for some of us eight, eight hours. I mean, you should get, I mean, I've, we've got studies on sleep, but the, the optimum is seven to eight hours of sleep that you're supposed to get. If you get too much, it's bad for you. If you get too little, it's bad for you. But it's a third. If, if you have more than eight hours, it's Well, not... if you're getting up to 10 hours, evidently it's That's not good not metabolically. Good. And if you get less, less it's than... not gr less than six. It's, you know, or five it's to six, good. it's not good for you. It's, you can do that, but don't sustain it. You know, because we all have deadlines. Yeah, and, we all and we, have we, yeah, the yeah, we are, yeah, exactly, exactly. But it's not. So you spend a third of your life asleep, all right? And the scripture does say that in Song of Songs, that when we sleep, our heart is awake. So our heart is able to commune with God, the creator of the universe. And so why are we ignoring a third of our lives? So, you know, dreams are a way that, that, that we can connect with heaven, the creativity of heaven, but also with that divine love story. So at the centre of the book, it's on dream interpretation, biblical dream interpretation, but actually the centre of the book is chapter six and seven, eight, which is the divine love story, because that's where it all starts. It's to do with, with he who is love. And in that place of love, he wants, God wants to communicate with us. And that can be when we're awake, but also when we're asleep, because when we are asleep, our heart is still awake. But what I find interesting, Mark, is this. As you said, we spend a third of our lifetime sleeping. Yeah. And yet we don't get much teaching on it. Yeah. Through church. Yeah. And we wake up in the morning and 
you might turn to your spouse and say, oh, I had this, I had this dream. <laughs> I can't make sense of it. And most of the time, we can't make sense of the, our dreams. So how do we find some kind of illumination to sure. interpret them? Yes, there's two principles at work really is, well, number one, you know, um, write what you can remember of the dream immediately. Um, because the, it does fall off exponentially, in other words, and not in a straight line, all right? So the longer you're awake, the less re you remember of the dream. So try and remember and write something down within the first few minutes. And even if, if it's a small thing, that's a stepping stone to help you to remember. And we break it down and, and there's three key principles. Simplify the dream, ask whether or not you're the subject of the dream or you're a spectator, and also then write down things to do with context because you can't just go through a checklist of dream. You can't just go through a checklist of dream symbols because if you could interpret a dream just on a list of things, then you have no need for the second part of dream interpretation, which is revelation is given. Because if we could interpret a dream based on a checklist, we have no need of Jesus in the process. And the Bible says, you know, to Joseph and other people, don't all interpretations belong to God. So if all interpretations with Joseph and Daniel belong to God, why are we not asking God for that revelation to understand the dream? Does that make sense? So we can yeah. get so far with checklists, and there are a few checklists in there, but I've avoided putting in lots of checklists because I actually want to major on the revelation is given. So actually that then it becomes down to our relationship, who is, who is God with love. So it's the love of God. So it comes from that place of love. So again. Mark, even with some of these um, disconnected, random images that we wake up remembering, God might be wanting to say something. Absolutely, absolutely. And not only to us, but also, um, uh, I, I don't think I told you this story, but you know how it says in, in the book of, you know, when we read Daniel, you know, about the fact that yes. he had this whole Nebuchadnezzar moment. And it's kind of quite extreme because Nebuchadnezzar is quite a, a starting opening scenario, isn't it? It's, it's, it's um, I want you to interpret a dream that I'm not going to tell you about. Remember that bit, you I know, do. yeah. So it's not the e well, it's, uh, interpreting a dream could be said to be difficult, but I'm actually not going to tell you the dream. You've got to tell me the dream and tell me what it means. And I remember being in Toronto, Catch the Fire, 20th anniversary on my birthday. Someone from the ministry team in Toronto Church, who I knew because I spent a lot of time time there, said, "Mark, um, I believe you're meant to kind of pray for me." I said, "Okay." So I put my hand on their shoulder and I saw this movie. And I said, oh, I'm seeing this movie. Um, this, is, this is what the movie is. And would you like to know what it means? And they said, yeah. And then the feedback was, because they were kind of like um, overcome crying and stuff like that. They said, this is a dream. You just told me the dream that I had two years ago. And I've been seeking the interpretation of this dream for the last two years. So I just did the Daniel thing where God told me a dream that somebody had had, they didn't tell me about it, and I interpreted it. That has happened probably about 35 times since. And I've led people to Jesus through, through that. that process where, where we've done things in, in pubs and things like that, where people would come up and, and you would say, um, can I tell you about the recurrent dream that you've been having? And, you t and they, you know, it's, 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 it's amazing. It's very emotional. Um, because it's because it's the goodness and the love of God reaching out, isn't it? It's reaching out. God is reaching out all the time. Yes. And whether or not, sorry, it's just, it's just I, I feel passionate about this. It's just that whether we're in the mood or not, because God is always in a good mood. We can't just say to him, God, I don't feel it today because God feels it every day. And I think that's what I've learned is the fact that whether I feel it or I don't, God is always in a good mood and he wants to reach out with his heart, which is overflowing with love to someone that needs to, to know that love out, the overflow. And it doesn't matter whether I'm feeling or not because the reality is God is always in a good mood. That's beautiful. Now, I'm going to ask you to do something, but you don't have to do it. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because obviously I'm not trying to play a trick here. Sure, sure. Okay. We, we've got viewers now, Mark, yeah. who are tuned in from all over the world. Yeah and across the UK. Would you just look into that camera and if God gives you a word for somebody 
to speak it out or it's a dream or whatever. Yeah. I just feel it would be really great to always put into practice what you've been telling us. Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, well, first of all, um, there's someone that's had a dream about a horse, a white horse. And um, so uh, what does that mean? And actually it's been a recurrent dream. And so what God is saying is, is there's a couple of things with that, is the fact that number one, he will carry you on that horse. And so you've been struggling for a, a long time in a, in a particular process or relationship. And the, the, basically it's, it's, it's kind of an I give up moment. You know, I need to be carried. So actually, you know, Jesus wants you to get onto that horse and he will carry you. And the other aspect is somebody's actually been dreaming about um, a horse as well. And it goes to the scripture uh, in terms of um, the fact that uh, uh, that people rely on the strength of horses and of men. But actually, we should rely on the strength of God. So if that's you and you've been relying on your own um, human achievements, because actually you're a very gifted person watching this now. You can actually do a lot under your own strength. But God is saying to you, actually rely on me and see how far you can travel. And actually for the dreams that you've always had to be fulfilled. And, and actually, even as people have been watching this right now, um, there's something about um, pain in your neck. There's a lot of necks being healed at this moment in time. And actually, that's, that's all about actually um, loosening up your neck so you can look at God squarely in the face, and as, it w- as it were, to bathe in his light, because actually you've been turning slightly the other way and you've been getting a bit of a stiff neck. And he wants you to look full in the face of his blazing eyes of passion and actually hear what he wants for you, your calling, destiny and purpose, which are mentioned in Psalm 139, verse 16. Amen. Wow, that was wonderful, Mark. Thank you. If one of those words was for you and resonated with you, we'd love to hear about it. So do please take a moment to email and tell us about it. I'm confident that you have spoken a word to someone there, Mark. You're a very fascinating man. I I enjoy talking to you and uh, I love it that you study the effects of the sun on the skin, but you love the sun of righteousness and you're endeavouring to tell as many people as possible about him. Thank you, Mark, for joining us on Facing the Canon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wasn't that inspirational? I have a lot of food for thought. I was very struck being reminded that uh, we sleep a third of our life and God wants to communicate to us. And um, this book might help in digging into some of uh, what we can learn from the dreams that we have. Thank you for joining us on Facing the Canon. Please join us again. Thank you.